We're back. I'm sorry that that took so long. Boy, howdy, it was starting to get warm in here. <sighs> Alright, sorry about that. Had to go get new things to paint. So, we've got a few options. We've got Owl Bear, which might be fun. A little bit more brown and yellow. We've got. Bryomic, if I remember right, this is the bonus one that you were talking about. Well, I'll just, I'll pull out their cards. Hold on. There we go. So we have Z, who is, as you said, from Stranger Things. Zanzibar, who is Freddie Mercury. Anton Guffin, who is Iron Man. Asmodeus, who looks like he's from, um, oh, what is it? The Dark Souls game. 
Badger, who is who's you know Logan from Wolverine. Brenog, who is the dwarf from Lord of the Rings. He is Thorin Oakenshield's cousin from the Iron Hills. Some of these characters from this set aren't anything that I can immediately put my finger on. Countess Ordelia is, you know, Leia Organa. Earl Jamie is Jamie Lannister. Finartin is a giant. Billy is from Stranger Things. Oh, Grayson Gruber. That's Professor Snape from, you know, Harry Potter. Hyg, that is... Uh, what's his name? From Vikings. Um, I'm drawing a blank. Let me out, guys. Anyway, and then Hild is uh, Hilda, his wife. Joan is Joan of Arc. The Death Master is um, Van Halen. Princess Ayla, that's Wonder Woman. Filguria, that's Storm from X-Men. Kelsey is a wizard. Lavidia is uh, from Mad Max. Brinks Moonshine, that's, you know, David Bowie. So we've got a bunch of uh, awesome characters that we can do. Rocco and John Ryan are supposed to be somebody's, but I, I, I can't put my finger on them. Oh, Sir Swartz, that's the Black Knight from um, Monty Python. Tis but a flesh wound. Marquise, that's Prince. And that's all of the bonus characters we have there. So we could do one of those. I think we've also got a dragon in here. But I don't want to do any of the big fancy characters or the big things because they're not primed. So they won't look as good. At least that one that we just did was somewhat primed. So I think we will do the owl bear, and that was more of a, more just a teaser. Also, it appears as though we might have gone offline and then back online. So if anybody is not seeing the feed, you guys might have to take your game down and put your game back up. leave those bonus characters over there for now um, I will prime them and we will paint them a little later doesn't look like we're gonna be able to put the owl bear on a stand his base is too big just tuning in we just finished the paladin character and now we are getting our wet palette reprimed and ready to go welcome to the painting stream with theoden So 
Sorry, we used all of our wet pallet space last time, so we've got to... Got to get a fresh one set up. Last one was a little... A little bit much. Orcs, no orcs in the bonus set, I don't think. I think it's all player characters and a giant dragon. Don't need yellow. Well, we will. We'll need that yellow for the owl bear. We'll need the medium for the owl bear. The owl bear up here so you guys can see him. Brave Lord Gray, we'll keep that blue. I don't think uh, I don't think there's any blue on the owl bear. Green, we'll use green for his base. Crusader skin, we'll keep Crusader skin. Sand golem, dark wood, no red. Um. No Dweller Purple. Need a medium tone. And we will take... Palette Bone. Sort of for his claws. I think that will be... That'll look good. So let's start off with a sand golem. No, no, give me that brown leather. We're gonna use brown leather for him. And then we'll go back over his individual areas. sure how well this is going to work out because he hasn't been primed. Might work out better than we think, but... Definitely think a primed character looks better than an unprimed character. gonna go slop chop on this and paint him as briskly as we can or let the speed paint do its work then you guys can really get to see it uh, see it do its thing so you guys can look at it um, down in the page in the bottom there is this speed paint on the Amazon link if you guys want to take a look at it you guys are looking into getting into painting Like before, we're gonna go light now, and then we will come back and do the darker tinges later. Slight shimmer would look nice on the feather edges. I agree. I think I've got a white-ish that we might be able to use.
Real quick chat, I'm gonna switch to a bigger brush so we can get this base tone done a little faster. This is our dry brush. It's just whoa, whoa. Sorry about that, chat. We lost our paintbrush. This is our dry brush. It is just a wet and wild makeup brush that we got from Dollar General or Walmart. I can't remember which. Dollar Tree, one of the stores. And it just makes applying this wash so much faster, so much easier. Especially stuff with this where it doesn't have to be white as nice right now and really I had before a dip station that we would use this with we're just gingerly going to apply this now this guy has not been primed he's straight plastic And we are just putting this wash on. Just so you guys can see how easy it is to use this stuff. No real, no real care, no real consideration. We're just applying it to all of the areas that need it. So I'm avoiding his, his talons, I'm avoiding his feet, because all of that's going to be a lighter color. But all of his feathers, all of that stuff that's going to be this brown, these tips, we're going to go back with a lighter color. But because I want his base color to be this brown, we're just going to let it do its thing. Let it get in those recesses. Let it pool up. Now we're gonna see what it does. Think of painting as like an experiment. That's all we're doing right now, experimenting. Seeing what things do. I'm not an expert at all. I'm just a man who likes to paint. Makes me feel good, calms me down, keeps me sane. Helps with the social anxiety, if you guys know what I mean. World is stressful. You gotta find something that makes you happy and do it. Not something that it matters what the outcome is. Just about getting there. Sorry about that, I got my hand in the way.
need to get inside his little area there. Don't want all of this area to be brown down here, but we'll get it started. The first coat. Dry brush on that base. This plastic down here doesn't have a lot of ridges, so it doesn't really have anything for this to kind of sort of adhere to. Give that a minute to dry do its thing. We kind of slap chop that on there pretty fast. Um, bring out the old dry brush. Now this, if I was doing this with a base, this would 100% be a white base. Or at least a, a black base with a lot of Zenithal highlighting. Um, like copious amounts, because that brown is going to be dark. But maybe it won't matter so much that we didn't prime it in the beginning. We'll just have to see. Let that do its thing. How are you guys enjoying the stream so far? Um, if you guys are just now tuning in, so far we have done these three guys back here. We've done the undead archers. This one is undead green cloak that dried up pretty nicely, I think. We just finished the Paladin. With his blue cloak and his war-torn shield. And now we're working on the Owlbear. A little bit of everything here. Um, enemies, player characters, and now we're going to have uh, some environment things. Maybe you could have this guy, I don't know, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a, a regular bear in the back of one of your scenes. You could potentially have him thinking he's bigger and badder than what he is, have him maybe going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a dragon or something. Uh, we've done a couple of those. not we've done but we've got a couple of those that we can in insert into the scene I wish I painted this We have the owlbear go toe to toe with that. I think the owlbear would lose, but uh, you know, definitely, definitely something. I think we've got an adult white over here, but we moved out here to this part of Missouri little under just about a year ago and we haven't quite got everything of mine unpacked really anything we have a little bit but not as far as like my art stuff goes because we just now started it um is drying up but it's gonna take it a minute so I think in the meantime maybe we mix up a special color for his beaks maybe try to find a lighter bone color for the bottom of his wings we'll move him back here so he's doing his thing and we will try very hard let's see that was hard browned leather 
soft tone we're gonna do at the end. I don't think we're gonna need the dark wood because that's gonna be a little dark for what we're doing. We'll take a uh, we'll take sand golem and crusader skin. Mix it together for the tinge on his wings. I'd like a white. I don't think I have my bone white. I think that's what we were going to use the pallid bone for. But pallid bone comes out a little a little yellow. Sort of like uh, sort of like that droid there in the back. Definitely need a needle or something. Where did my Windsor 7 go? Anybody see it? I found it. Do you have an acrylic white? Thank you. Make sure all the characters from now on are uh, primed. Paint his talons white, and then we're gonna come back over it with that pallid bone. Is cause because that speed paint is medium based. It's not quite thick enough to be a paint by itself. It's a paint, don't get me wrong. But it's more of a tint, more of a shade, more of a stain the paint than an actual paint itself. If that makes sense, chat. Not bad, it's not awful. Could be better. What I'll do is I will prime a bunch of stuff for the next paint stream. Um, what I've done before is I will take a paint stick and I will glue a bunch of models to it and then spray paint them my primer color. That way you can do them all at once. That way it's faster and easier. You can get them all pretty uniform that way.
tried to do sort of an impromptu thing. This is the first paint stream that we've had. We're not fully flushed out like we are with the gaming stream yet. Um, even then, the gaming stream, anything and everything can always be better. Um, so like, follow, um, drop a comment, tell me what you think. Uh, if you guys think it could be better in some way, uh, tell me that. I try to pause so you guys can see it. I'm off, I'm off camera. Oops. See, that's the other thing. I get so into it, sometimes I don't notice where he is. Because for me to actually paint, I would sit back here, and it wouldn't even be on camera. You know? Um... And we just have a, we just talk. You know, and then you guys can't see it. And I'm looking like I'm all the way over here. Which would be bad. This is more of our talking stream anyway. Kind of a wind down from the road. You guys get some smooth jazz. I get the paint. The missus gets to lose her mind while she takes care of the children, and we, uh, we get to hide in our art room. What do you guys think of that? Sometimes I think she wants to murder me in my sleep. Sometimes the voices in my head would let her. feeling I'm gonna end up repriming and painting him. He's one of those models that came with one of the paint sets from Wizards of the Coast. And I was like, oh well that's cool, you know. I think that set's on my Amazon. Came with pretty good paint. It came with Army Painter, too. Because um, I think Army Painter is used by Wizards of the Coast as an entry-level paint. So, it's not super expensive, but it's still good paint. You know, kind of get everybody started down the path. But even then, some paint is good for some things, and some paint is good for other things. Like, I'll use speed paint for uh, models that not not matter, but you know, um, are smoother or have more not smoother have more uh, have more ridges for that medium to sink into. But I will use straight acrylic paint if I'm doing flatter surfaces, you know. So it's all about what you want, the effect you want to get. So right now that brown was good for his feathers, but we're going to go over everything that we want to basically paint paint with this white. And then we'll come back and we'll add the details afterwards
So just like with the Paladin, he didn't start off looking great, but the more you do, the more you fix stuff, the better it all come together. It's about like life, really. Can't start off where you're going, but you'll get there. Currently painting his toenails. Getting a mani petty. Maybe he'll be less angry. I doubt it. Owl bears are pretty uh, territorial in the lore. I doubt they're not going to eat you over a mani pity. Not a big fan of white paint. I feel like it separates a lot. You've constantly got to go back and add to it. But something like this, you don't want to do black. It's just something that you kind of got to deal with. Like, look at his foot. See, I already painted it, and you can already see that it's starting to pull apart. So you just kind of got to wait for it to dry and then go back over it and then wait for it to dry and then go back over it. And... It's not even like the kind of paint. I think it's just white, like in general. Like even the white that I had before would do it. Maybe it's because I'm trying to use white with the wet palette. Maybe that's it. Maybe you guys have better luck not using the wet palette with it, but... For the stop and start paint, I don't want to like waste paint by not using the wet palette because that's what it's meant for. So like you have the wet palette, okay? And then you put like your lid on it and then you put your overall lid on top of it okay well now this has my paint brushes I can have the paint pre squirted into it and some of them have little spaces for models uh, but then you band it together okay and then you can take it with you wherever you go and then you can paint on the fly and then, because this is wet, it keeps your paints wet. They stay better for longer. Something to think about.
Now that's not to say that everybody needs a wet palette. Don't get me wrong, because you don't. But if you stop and start on painting a lot, it's just nice to have. He's okay. He fell on the wet palette, but he's... Ah, I take that back. Happy... Happy little uh, mess-ups. Paper towel. He's alive. Barely, but he's alive. Okay. Now we're going to take that pallid bone that we had earlier. I hope everybody's day is going well. I know it's a step away from what we typically do, but that's why it's my stream and you guys are just living here. And we're going to do this pallid bone over the white. Go dirty it up. You want to make it dirty. We're going to do it on his paws. We're going to do it on his talons. We're going to do it on his beak. Kind of offsets that tone. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come back with a black. And then we're going to do the detail lines on top of it. Really going to make his claws and stuff pop. Doesn't take much. And that brown that we did earlier is really starting to set nice now. And that was without um, a base that was out without priming him, it was just straight. Almost like a coffee color for his paws. And you take that up as high as you want, right up to where the feathers stop. this one on the rock. We're going to be careful not to do the rock because we want to uh, paint that rock sort of like a like a mossy we'll paint it gray like a steel gray and then we'll come back over it with the mossy green that uh, plasmatic bolt 
that we had done before. Maybe we mix some verdant green, some orc skin. Really. Really sort of make it pop. But I think this one's base is going to be on another day. Yeah, see, there we go. That mixes with that white to make sort of a mocha coffee creamer color. Patent pending. Kind of sporadic on his wings, give his give his tips a little pizzazz. Cause he's a zazzy owl bear. Now, with this, because you want it to be recessed, okay, you don't want it to be very prominent. What you want to do is because you don't want it on the flat surfaces, because his feathers go this way, okay, you want to paint towards his feathers. Not with his feathers, against his feathers. Okay, so it's like if you have a cat, um, their hair goes a certain way. Your hair goes a certain way. You want to paint the opposite of that. But then it won't be you having red hair with blonde tips. You'll have blonde. No, no, that's right. You won't have like, say my hair's brown. Okay, it wouldn't be. If I need bl uh, blonde tips, if I did this, my hair's going to be blonde. If I did it this way, then the tips are going to be blonde, but the hair's going to be brown. That's the idea that we're going for. But then you just get the raised edges with it. If that makes sense. I hope so. I hope that makes sense to you guys. And you don't want to do the whole model. You just want to do it very... See, I'm just very sporadically up the back on some of the tinges of the feathers. If I actually keep the model on frame... So like his chest feathers go down. So we're going to paint up.
and just do as much as you think you need. Let it set. If it looks good, great. If it doesn't look good, you think you want more, you want it, you know, give them a little bit more character in the face. Give them a little bit more character in the face. Make his crest white. Make his tips blue. Say he's a magic owl bear. Well, this coffee brown that I'm doing, because this is a owl bear owl bear. But say you want a druid with an owl bear form. Okay. Well, instead of coffee brown, you like a tinge of blue. And he's magical. Boom. Owl bears with style. Then when you start your next campaign or whatever and you show up with magic owl bears, your players are going to remember you. You're going to be like, oh yeah, magic owl bears. I knew they needed spicing up because they're already not dangerous enough. Look at that. That owl bear is going to eat you. Silar here. Like, like, like that owl bear is bigger than him. He's going to eat you. Ah! And we didn't even prime him first. You know, and I, I think he's, I think he's looking all right. I think he's doing good. I'm gonna mop up some of this brown. We got a little bit. A little bit much on his crown up here, but that's all right. He's a little old. And we've still got brown on our wet palette, so we can grab it and touch up the areas that we might have missed. Maybe where it got pulled away. Maybe where we put too much coffee. If you haven't seen that, that's actually pretty cool. People painting with coffee. I thought it was crazy. People do it. I like painting creatures like this with big faces. Particularly because I think I'm bad at painting faces. So if they're big, they gotta be perfect. It's okay. He's fine. This time. Like, for reals. I don't know why I insist on using that base. Maybe it's because it lifts him up so you guys can see him, but like... <laughs> It'd be okay. 
Okay. All right, we're gonna take some red, some blood red, and we gonna mix it with a fire giant orange. Or I thought I had a pink. Purple alchemy. We're gonna mix it with purple alchemy. Um, by the way, these speed paints come with mixing balls already in them, which is awesome. You don't have to do it. You don't have to put them in there. You just, and they're good. Oh, that's a good color. I don't know if you guys can see that, I'll push it back. I'm gonna be bled. Somebody bled on my wet palette. to his tongue, to his mouth. Good thing about his mouth is he's ravenous. You almost want to get a little on the outside of his beak. If we come down here, we put some on some of his claws. Then your then your then your characters look at that and they're like, I don't think that owl bear is very friendly. I uh, definitely think he's recently eaten some people. fire red orange and uh, fire giant red look really good when he's a highland blue on his eyes he's got like cute adorable blue eyes but he's just absolute ravenous I Lord blue is that same blue that we used on uh, the regalman's cloak earlier Because his eyes are so big, we can almost just drop them right in there.
prefer to let the paint do its thing. Because this paint wants to get in those edges. Like it wants to seep into those corners. So let it. And now we're going to let it do its thing. Drain off our brush. I'm going to grab that brown back. I'm going to paint back around those eyes. Cover up what we just got out of the line. And that's the owlbear. bear. It's not too bad, I don't think. Um, aside from the base, mind you. But all we did was dry brush him with that brown, that hardened leather. And then we went in with the white on his claws. And then we used pallid bone. We mix that in the hard leather to make a coffee brown. And that's pretty pretty much it. We added the fire red and the fire giant orange together to create the blood on his claws and his mouth as well as on his, then we just took the straight red on his claws and talons. And we used that coffee brown to go against the grain on some of his feathers. Add deeper, darker, not deeper, darker, I'm sorry, lighter brushed individual tones. to his feathers. We took High Lord Blue and White and added it to his eyes. Now his base, I will probably paint his base black, dry brush on the white, and then do the verdant uh, stormlight green for moss on the rocks. But I believe that that's going to be for a video for another time. Um, if you guys are just now tuning in, this is a new stream that we are doing where I paint miniatures, which is something I absolutely love to do. Um, and we end up with great, I think great, you guys be the judge, uh, miniatures like this. It's not hard. It doesn't take very long. Anybody can do it, guys. You guys can do it. Kids can do it. Um... But they look good on the table in your games. All right. We did the owl bear. We did the high lord.
which I could have done his face a little bit better, but I think his blades, his cloak, everything turned out pretty good. His shield turned out fantastic. Um, and we also painted some of these archers today. So I think they turned out rather wonderful. Next time, we will have more primed and ready to go. This guy's got the blue jerkin. Green glove. Red piping. White feathers. With the royal red cloaks. But be sure to tell your friends, come watch, view, like, follow, all that great stuff. And I will see you guys on the flip. We're gonna clean up just a little bit. Always good to go around and clean up after yourselves. That way your next painting session starts off with a in the right place. Be sure to eat paint because it's good for you. can't tell you guys enough how much I appreciate all of you. Every last one of you that supports the stream is here for us. Um, Josh, I promise I'm going to get the dragon primed and that will be the next thing that we paint. Let me put him down here. Let me move the wet palette. It'll be the next thing that we paint. We're gonna paint. We're gonna paint him black. We're gonna prime him black, and then I will do the zenithal highlighting on stream. Um, probably gonna go with an underglow from the base and work our way up with the zenithal highlighting. That way, it looks like he's got uh, maybe some candles around him, something like that. We're gonna paint his books. Uh, I think we're gonna go with a gold dragon this time uh, if you guys have thoughts on that come over to our Twitter uh, come over to our discord and tell us hey I think the dragon needs to be green hey why not a blue dragon hey why not a why why, why did why what why did you choose to go with the gold dragon uh, which now that I'm thinking about it we are going to need gold paint so maybe we do like a yellow ish i'm not 100 percent uh maybe we won't go with that maybe we'll go with the blue drake maybe that yeah because we've got the adult draco lich um We've got the adult Draco Lich, so maybe the adult Draco Lich is blue. Okay, so maybe the book dragon is a blue dragon and your party pisses him off or something. And they kill him, and then he comes back. He's like, oh, well, I'm actually such a adept, studious Drake that I'm actually a Lich. And he has a secret phylactery somewhere in his underground cavern. And then the party has to find the phylactery to destroy it to stop the Draco Lich. That could be an outcome. Whereas if they just meet the book dragon, then they're like, oh, well, hi, I have this knowledge for you. And they trade knowledge and books and then the dragon helps them. 
and helps them along with their party. But the other way that that encounter could go is they end up killing the Blue Drake, and the Blue Drake comes back as the big bag of the campaign. There's always that idea. So I think, yeah, actually, I think we're going to go with blue. And correct me if I'm wrong, Gryomic, blue drakes are your favorite drakes anyway. So I think that is what we will do. And they kind of look the same, sort of. I mean, I don't know. He's got the head and the horns of a gold drake. And I think in lore, if I remember right, gold drakes... As long as they're not chromatic, are not evil. I think they're the rarest dragons. And because that, it would play into the whole book drake. Now, blue dragons are evil. Or no. non. Yeah, that's it. Chromatic dragons are genuinely good. And non-chromatic dragons are typically evil. So... Maybe we go with a chromatic blue dragon. And eventually down the line, we just paint the Draco Lich chromatic blue to match. I don't know. I don't think the players are going to, you know, um, warrant too much on it. But that is going to be where we stop for today. And next we will do the blue Drake. Definitely blue. I don't know. Tell me what, what you guys think. I'm still on the fence, but I, I like the book dragon into Draco Lich encounter for D&D, &D, and I think it would make a lot of sense. Um, we do have a blue that I think would work. So we'll see how that goes. Looks like we might have a couple of those. Um, but as always... Stay salty, my friends, and I will see you here on Theoden Gaming next time.